Belia dancers. And now some of them have moved to Paris and to you know many, many different countries and teach their Kalbelia dance. That hip movement is not the hip movement of a Bharatanatyam trained dancers. They really get that hip swing of those gypsy women. And I wanted to acknowledge that Akan Shah has a group called Bali Pop. She teaches uh, Bollywood as well and has and, and performs it. And I'd like to take that moment to say that one of our co-curators is the new dance director of the Erasing Borders Dance Festival, which was yesterday and today. Deepsika Chatterjee, where are you hiding? saw them at some event, I believe, and she said, Rajika, we've got to have them. And she's a light designer and is very tentative about her dance taste, which is fine, I have to tell you. There was a little bit of stalling so we could um, also uh, <laughs> dry the stage. Because now our journey brings us to another place where the many faceted cultures of India are nurtured and sometimes melded with local cultures they find themselves in. New York City, home to a range of Indian dance forms from Bharatanatyam, Kathak and Mohiniyattam to folk dances from all over India, not to forget the ubiquitous movements of a Bollywood. When I see three great Bollywood dancers right here on my left. In celebration of this melting pot and the communities that feed into it, Kalamandir dance spearheaded by Brinda Guha, presents works that celebrate people coming together to meld multifarious movement forms within a contemporary aesthetic. Inspired by a TED talk by Colby Harrell, poet and spoken word artist, whom you will hear in the soundscape to which they perform, one too many colors incorporates peoples of different ethnicities dancing to music from a range of traditions to express the many shades and tints of this, our amazing city.
love most about colors is colors are lovers of their opposites. Violet loves the color yellow. Last week, Violet bumped into yellow at the grocery store. Yellow offhandedly mentioned how she doesn't like when guys buy her flowers. So Violet bought a pack of sunflower seeds and said, look, they're not flowers exactly, but when they grow, they'll be my favorite color. Yellow blushed. And on their first date, they both had dark dirt caked in their fingernails and on the knees of their blue jeans. A love story. That's an excerpt from a poem that I performed recently. And I like it because it serves as a nice framework for what I want to do today, which is use colors and color theory as a lens through which we can view our relationships with people, specifically so that we can consciously develop and evolve how we feel about people who are different from us. Because how we feel about people who are different from us is learned. We learn it from our parents, from our grandparents, from anyone responsible for raising us. The problem with this is we are raised very black and white because shades of gray are hard to explain. And when you're dealing with children, shades of gray are hard to understand. And so we simplify. We take a really complicated world with complicated people and complicated relationships, and we try to make it easier to understand while also avoiding all of those difficult and especially nuanced conversations. The problem with this is it leaves us more susceptible to do other things that are really black and white and really basic. One of these is to buy into social constructions, which are arbitrary, and they warrant no explanation. It's just, this is how things are. And the second is to perpetuate stereotypes. Because again, stereotypes are very basic, very black and white. They don't really account for shades of gray. You see, in color theory, you've got a 12-part color wheel and all the different ways that these colors achieve harmony with one another. And I want to talk about the two most fundamental ways of achieving color harmony. We learned about these in elementary school art class. They're very basic. The first is analogous colors. Analogous colors, if you'll recall, are any three colors that are side by side on that color wheel. You've got yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange, or red, violet, violet, blue, violet. These are analogous sets of colors. You can think of them as neighbors. They're getting along great, all is well. They take day trips up to Charleston together. It's quite fun, it's good fun. The second is complementary colors. Complementary colors are any two colors directly opposite one another on that same color wheel. These colors couldn't be more different from each other. And it is because they are so different that they go together so well. Because maximum contrast creates maximum stability. As far as colors are concerned, opposites refine each other. They balance each other, they soothe each other, they play off each other's intensities. We aren't really like that in our relationships with other humans. We don't find people who are opposite us and create that balance, create that harmony. And I think we should.